What's up, sports fans? It's time for week number nine of the NFL, Grievers Picks and Predictions. Uh, but before we get underway, let's just see how we did in week number eight. Um, and apologies, I'm going to have to run through this uh, quite quick because my voice uh, isn't doing so hot right now. I have a really bad uh, uh, sore throat. So anyways, I'm not going to prattle on like I usually do. Just give you guys the rundown and any details that I can to try to get this one out of here. So Anyways, um, we do a lot better than we did in uh, in the week before. Week before was our worst week, eight to seven. It was not a very good week, and we fell drastically. We fell very far behind. Uh, but this week, topping ourselves out at an eleven to five, not too shabby. One point over the average. We always try to hit, as I've said uh, in previous videos, that ten points is the general accepted rule of you had a good week. Uh, and anything over that is a great week. Anything over that is a better week, right? So going under 10 isn't so hot. But 11, eh, we're trying to make up for that 8-point week uh, the week before. Um, but this week did not start out so hot for me. Minnesota losing the Thursday night game to the Rams. Big loss there. Whenever you lose a Thursday night game, it sets yourself up for disaster for the rest of the week. It always feels that way. It always feels like if you don't get Thursday right your week is not going to go well. And 2 o'clock did not make me feel much better because Philadelphia, dog-walking Cincinnati at home. Baltimore, losing to Cleveland. Already I'm 0-3 and, and I'm not feeling so hot. Plus, my one win after that is Detroit. But the Lions, everybody picked the Lions. There was not a single person, at least in my pool, that picked the Titans. So, yes, I have a win. I'm 1-3, but... Everybody is a bare minimum of one in three, unless they just didn't submit their picks. So, yeah, that didn't make me feel so great. Same with the Arizona win, who barely beat the Miami Dolphins. Not a whole lot of people bet on Miami either. So, really, it was two non-games. The Detroit was basically a non-game since everybody picked it. It's not an extra point one way or another over anybody. And I would just wasn't feeling it. Followed up by the fact that the Jets lost, and that was a coin flip pick. Quite a few people picked New England, quite a few people picked the Jets, but obviously I didn't, and now I'm even further behind the eight ball. And Tampa Bay, as definitely one of my picks where I was like, okay, Atlanta I think is the better team, but I think Tampa Bay can do this. Tampa Bay really just quite literally dropped the ball. They just did not make this stuff happen, and Atlanta 31-26. to So 2 o'clock was not my friend. Two o'clock was destroying me at this junction. However, we start to clean up. You wouldn't imagine this, but we start to clean up quite heavily here um, because we don't get a single other game wrong after this. All our losses happen. Four losses at two o'clock, uh, or I should say five o'clock, uh, they happened, and uh, the Thursday night game, we lost, right? So, But those were our only losses. Those are our five losses. Green Bay beats Jacksonville. Houston beats Indy. Chargers beat New Orleans, quite handily. Buffalo destroys Seattle. Denver beats Carolina. KC beats Vegas. Uh, the Commanders managed to beat Chicago, though that was a little more closer. San Francisco does beat Dallas. Dallas only turned it on, though I will say one thing about that game. Though I picked the 49ers over my Cowboys for obvious reasons right now, um, outside of the third quarter, San Francisco didn't look so great against Dallas either. The third quarter was the only time 21 of San Francisco's points, I believe, were scored solely in the third quarter, and Dallas had no answer. So, you know, you take away the third quarter, the other three quarters, neither team looked like they were much further ahead of each other, you know? So, um, I, I did expect San Francisco to win, but I thought it'd be far more devastating, and I think San Francisco really dropped the ball. Dallas nearly capitalized on tying up the game, so is what it is there. And then finally, we had Pittsburgh over the Giants, which everybody pretty much picked. But still, 11-5 to for week eight. Not doing too bad, not doing too bad. 11-5, let's jump over to our week number nine picks before my throat gives it. Okay, so for our week number nine picks, for some weird reason, the Jets are picked as the favorite somehow. I don't know how that's possible, but I'm going with the Texans. I'm going with Houston for tonight's game. That's an obvious pick. I don't think I'll be betting on the Jets very much for the rest of the season. This is my first controversial pick. I went against my Cowboys last week. I don't think that this game is going to be as easy as Atlanta fans and, and unbiased fans think. 
where Dallas was able to score 24 points, San Francisco said, yeah, we've got this in the bag, and Dallas capitalized on that, you know, giving them the easy route to victory. Um, I think if Dallas is able to capitalize on that a little quicker, Atlanta might have their hands full with the Cowboys. So knowing that a lot of the pool is going to go with the obvious uh, favorite in Atlanta at home, I think that Dallas is doing, so far this year, they've proven they're doing better on the road so than they are at home. I don't know. I'm just going to give my edge to Dallas on this one. I understand it's an underdog pick, but I think this is how I'm going to get ahead by a few extra points this week in the pool. Uh, followed up by that, we have uh, Buffalo at home over Miami, of course. No question there. I know rivalry games are always weird. They're always strange, but I do still think the Bills have Miami's number. Cincinnati, though losing, though losing heavily to the Eagles, I still think that Cincinnati is better than the Raiders. So I am going to go with Cincinnati at home. Then I'm going to choose Cleveland over the Chargers, where the Chargers weren't doing so hot the last couple of games. You know, though Chargers may have won, uh, they are not doing uh, as as well as I think. Once again, the Chargers are always this very strange team where they're this middle-of-the-pack team where sometimes they put up 40 points over a good team and sometimes lose to a team and barely put on 10 points on the board. So... I feel like the Chargers, uh, this is one of the weeks where their luck is just not there, their synergy isn't there, and Cleveland coming off a big win at home, uh, you know, they're at home, they came off a big win beating the Baltimore Ravens, I really do think that the Browns might actually have a shot to go uh, for two wins in a row this week. Um, then we have Tennessee over New England, this one is definitely subject to change, um, but Tennessee at home, New England, both of these teams suck. We'll just have to see which one sucks less. You know, I'm just giving it right now to the home advantage. Uh, but this one, of course, is as always subject to change. Washington over the Giants is just no question. Carolina over New Orleans. I'm telling you, Carolina is not going to lose every single game this year. You know, they're going to win a couple of games, and New Orleans is not that good. New Orleans is just not that great. And I really do think that Carolina has an honest shot. And I understand this is another upset pick. I'm picking a few upsets. Dallas, Cleveland, and Carolina being my major three upset picks this week, knowing that m the majority of both the pool and most people will be p not picking these teams. If I can even get two out of three of these, that'll give me a leg up. So those are my three upsets. We finish it off with all the favorites. Baltimore at home over Denver. Philadelphia over Jacksonville. Arizona over Chicago. A weird one there. I don't trust Arizona, but I don't trust the Bears either. Both of these teams seem to be a little wishy-washy. Sometimes they play like they're top tier, or at least trying to be a top tier team, and then other weeks they're like, what are you doing? Like, where was that team from last week? So they're a little wishy-washy on both sides of that field. So that one, of course, is subject to change. Detroit over Green Bay. It's not even a question in my mind right now. Uh, the Rams over Seattle. This is a bit of a, a pick. I know a lot of people are going to choose Seattle being at home. But I do think that the the Rams beating Minnesota has... They beat San Francisco. They beat Minnesota. It seems like they are able to beat the better teams. And they struggle against uh, weaker teams. Seems to be, uh, you know... The 2000, and then you know, basically the Tony Romo era of the Cowboys. You know, like they always they matched the play style. They could go toe to toe with the Patriots and Peyton Manning and Brett Favre, all these guys. But then all of a sudden they would play a uh, you know a really weak team and struggle to barely score a point. So yeah, they always played to the level. The Rams seem to be doing the same thing. But I do have a little bit more faith in the Rams than the Seahawks right now. Though I do think that's going to be the game to watch. I think it's going to be a great game. Um, and then uh, Minnesota over Indianapolis, though Minnesota lost to the Rams. I do feel like, um, sorry, I, I feel like the Vikings still, you know, once again, I think the Rams just turned on the heat and Minnesota just wasn't prepared for that kind of fire, you know, sort of idea. Um, uh, so I am going to still go with the purple and gold. I'm going to go with the Vikings uh, over the Colts, but we'll have to wait and see. And then Kansas City to finish it off picked over Tampa Bay. Though I do think that everyone praises Kansas City a little too much, if we look at actually the stat spreads of their games and the score spreads and stuff, we realize that Kansas City against mid-tier teams, low-tier teams, and high-tier teams have not dominated a single game. They might have controlled the field, they might have always been winning every quarter, but they weren't exactly, there was no 52-14, to 14, you know what I mean, like the Lions-Tennessee game last week. There was, had, there's been not a whole lot of that from Kansas City, so though their winning record is spotless right now, 
Uh, eventually they are going to lose. I don't, but uh, however, I don't think it's this Monday night. I don't think that this is the week to pick against Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. So those are my picks for week number nine. Sorry about the you know the low volume and the you know the clearing of my throat and stuff. I'm probably sounding a little raspy or nasally, but uh, that is what it is, right? You know. But I wanted to make sure I tried to get this video out. Um, and yeah. So anyways, how about them Cowboys? I I am a fan and I am a fool for picking them. A lot of people are saying, even my own brother who's a Cowboys fan. So, um, But let's just see. Let's wait and see what happens. Enjoy your Sunday football. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I don't know why the Jets are favorited, but let's go Texans for tonight's game. You know, And, uh, as, and of course, even though I didn't decorate or do anything for it, Happy Halloween to all those who are trick-or-treating and celebrating and such. Um, holidays are not really my thing right now, but yeah, happy Halloween to, to everyone who, of course, you know, if you have small ones or you love watching your scary movies, if you're watching the Halloween movies that come on every year and stuff like that, you know, just enjoy your Halloween however you choose to do so. So, yeah. Happy Halloween, everyone. Have a good one. See ya.